from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Tuesday, April the 2nd, 2019. Egyptian-led negotiations are continuing today for a ceasefire between Israel and terror group Hamas in Gaza. A local Palestinian TV station reported this morning that those talks include the possibility of a prisoner swap. Al-Quds TV, which is affiliated with Hamas, cited sources in the terror group saying that Hamas is demanding the release of dozens of its members from Israeli jails, and Israel is demanding the return of the remains of two IDF soldiers who were killed in the 2014 Gaza war, Hadar Golden and Aron Shaul, and the release of two Israeli civilians, Avira Mengistu and Hisham al-Sayed, believed to be held by Hamas. The two civilians crossed into Gaza of their own accord in 2014 and 2015, respectively, but are said to have mental health issues. The Jerusalem Post reported that a tweet from Hamas was posted in the midst of negotiations today showing pictures of family members of the missing Israelis, reading, you will see your sons only if you accept the terms of the resistance. Hamas officials later denied any talk of a prisoner exchange, and there has been no confirmation of the report from the Israeli side. Israel's President Reuven Rivlin is in Canada on an official visit. He met with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau in the capital, Ottawa, yesterday, where Rivlin thanked Trudeau for taking a strong stand against anti-Semitism and against the BDS boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign against Israel, which Trudeau said his government would continue to do. Trudeau added, we work together to combat hatred and anti-Semitism around the world, including through the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance and the International Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. The two also discussed the threats of a nuclear Iran and of terrorism. Rivlin later wrote on social media, Canada plays a key role in the fight against global terrorism, particularly ISIS, which threatens the stability of our region. Writing Canada's commitment to Israel's security is deep and long established, and we are grateful for it. Rivlin and Trudeau also laid a wreath at the Holocaust Memorial in Ottawa. Rivlin is also meeting with the Canadian Jewish community and will be the guest of honor at a Salute to Israel event organized by Jewish Federations of Canada, UIA, and Israel Bonds. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, meanwhile, is heading to Russia this week. The Prime Minister will be meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin on Thursday, five days before Israel's Knesset elections. The United Nations General Assembly today adopted a resolution that condemns Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. The resolution, which passed by consensus, was proposed after the attack on two New Zealand mosques last month, in which 50 people were murdered. The initial wording condemned Islamophobia alone, but Israeli ambassador to the UN, Danny Danone, pushed for it to also mention anti-Semitism. Noah Foreman, who represented Israel in the discussion today, said of the mosque attacks, we strongly condemn this horrifying act of terrorism. It is critical that the General Assembly sends a strong message against a religious-based hatred and hate crimes, but we must do it in such a way that unites us all. New Zealand's ambassador and permanent representative to the UN, Craig Hawke, said we welcome the resolution's focus on the need to combat intolerance and discrimination, including its call for strengthened international efforts to foster a global dialogue on the promotion of a culture of tolerance and peace based on human rights, and for the diversity of religions and beliefs. Israeli humanitarian organization Israel is providing life-saving emergency support in Mozambique after a deadly cyclone struck the country just two weeks ago. Israel will provide long-term recovery services, including clean water, in both Mozambique and Zimbabwe, which are concerned now with a cholera outbreak. Israel's education minister Naftali Bennett said today that the late Rona Ramon will be posthumously awarded the Israel Prize for her lifetime achievements in the area of education. 
After the death of her husband, Israel's first astronaut, Ilan Ramon, in 2003 during the fatal Columbia Space Shuttle mission, Rona led several educational efforts, among them Israel Space Week, as well as creating the Ramon Foundation to promote young people's interest in space. Ramon also lost her Israeli Air Force pilot son, Asaf, in a training accident in 2009. Rona Ramon died of pancreatic cancer last year. Upon hearing about the prize, the remaining Ramon children said it was a source of pride. They said our mother was able to take a life which was painful and turn it into a lifelong mission that gives other people hope. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Tuesday, April the 2nd. At 7 o'clock, it's Episode 7 of A Touch Away. At 8, Professor Mordechai Kedar discusses how Jerusalem is viewed in Islam. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Israeli journalist Ben Dror Yamini to discuss the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. At 10, Israeli author Dorit Rabinyan speaks about her book, All the Rivers. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, Mark Golub speaks to JTA Washington Bureau editor Ron Campius about APAC on tonight's In the News. And that's the JBS News Update for Tuesday, April the 2nd, 2019. I'm Tisha Bader.